Hi friends, here's a video on how to make your own vanilla sugar or vanilla xylitol. Since neither are considered health food, they should definitely be used only as special treats. I'll talk about the reasons why after I show you how to make the vanilla sugar. At its simplest, all you do is take two vanilla beans and toss them into one cup of sugar. I just keep the vanilla in there, but it's ready for consumption in about a week. I only use the vanilla pod in my sugar because the seeds went into another project. If you like, you can also scrape the seeds into the sugar and mix. This is an up-close view of xylitol, and this is white sugar. If you ask me, they both look like super processed sweeteners. Most of us are aware to some extent that sugar is linked to diabetes, tooth decay, obesity, and etc. and have chosen xylitol as a substitute. We often think that if they sell it at the health food store, then it must be okay. Supporters of xylitol say that it's naturally occurring in plums and birch, that it doesn't promote dental cavities, so it's used in natural toothpaste and gum, and that it doesn't raise blood sugar as dramatically as regular sugar. It's still incredibly processed. You can hardly fool yourself into believing you're actually enjoying plums and birch bark, the same way you can't possibly think that you're having sugar cane or sugar beets when consuming white sugar. Secondly, you can get diarrhea if you have too much xylitol. As a side note, you can also get diarrhea from an overdose of vitamin C, and we can't really argue that vitamin C is bad for us. Even though it's supposedly safe for diabetics, xylitol can still raise blood sugar levels when taken in higher quantities. Lastly, xylitol is super toxic to dogs, but playing devil's advocate, so is chocolate. So there's always going to be two sides to every story. Regardless of whether you're pro-sugar or pro-xylitol, the best course of action is to eat these only on the rare occasions, as your cheat meal or your cheat snack. Thanks for watching!